Hey, it says we're live. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're live from Chatham Tap Fishers. Moved to a different part of the bar. Uh, you should, by the way, come on down. They have great wings uh, and a great set of staff. Uh, they're wonderful. We are regulars. We love it. Evan, um, probably did not go the way you were hoping, as a United fan did not go the way I was hoping, and um, ultimately really not the highest quality football. No. Definitely entertaining for the neutral, but um, does this cause you distress? You know, I'm, I'm going to chalk this one up to just not showing up. That's, that's what I'm going to say. You know, we, we just didn't show up, and the fact is is that when you look at a game like this, a match like this, um, from the very beginning, we both commented how sloppy it was. You, you were spot on. I mean, you were spot on whenever you said, you know, this is a sloppy game. Um, the, the way the goals were scored were sloppy. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Arsenal. Arsenal came ready to play. So, you know, all you gunners out there, congrats. Um, nice win. Way to keep you uh, in that top four race. Uh, but, man, it was just a, a disgustingly sloppy match. Um, you had N'Golo Conte doing non-Conte things. You had Rudiger doing non-Rudiger things. Um, the midfield really screwed up several times. It was, it was not good. Um, I was happy to see uh, Timo Werner continuing to do his work. Yes, it was a lucky goal, but what do you always say about lucky goals, my friend? You're like, nobody takes those away, right? No, and, and, and you, you don't score if you don't shoot. you got to take that shot. Uh, you Look, uh, all the goals were kind of lucky in this match. There, there was not pretty football going on, but sometimes toward the end of the season, this, this is you grind it out. This is how you stay top four. Well, and this is, this is my only beef with this, and this is what I love. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe I'll watch the after-match uh, um, interview with Tuchel why the change why the change in personnel because you look the next couple matches you got west ham at the bridge you're going to united you know and 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 i think that you know i i don't know why you don't jump on this match to create momentum going into those two you know that that's just my that's my only question about this um to see lukaku on the field it was fine but um, that's my takeaway from the from the match. I think you know three things. Number one, uh, good to see Werner still working. Uh, it seemed like that Havertz created a spark, but I think he was put in too late. And then number three, why the personnel change? I'll never understand that. All I'm going to say about the personnel change is you're playing what? Yeah, it's the business end of the season. This is going to be three games in like eight nine days. You've got to rotate some people. Um, maybe there's injuries that we don't know about, maybe a knock here in practice. Um, I, I just thought it was really sloppy from both teams, um, really did not keep the ball well. There were, I mean, the number of times where we saw somebody intercept a pass, turn it right back over, that person turned it right back over, uh, it just really kind of uncharacteristic of the quality that these two teams can display. Soccer. I mean, that's what it looked like at times. You know, like it was just like, oh my goodness. I think, I think, unfortunately, this time of year, these games are going to happen, yes. and the ones that kind of can figure it out uh, can adapt to it. And Arsenal adapted to it just slightly better. I mean, yeah, look, no, there, were there, there were as many opportunities of bouncing balls in the box for Chelsea to capitalize on as there were for Arsenal, and Arsenal did it. But I want you to talk about a little bit about what you said that really was exposed about Chelsea during the second half of this season. That we can't, it, it is so hard for us to manufacture goals. Yeah. Like we're just not in the right place. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to question Tuchel's uh, game management here and say that this game was calling out for somebody who could come on and, and, and break down an individual defender, take somebody off the dribble create an imbalance and so you know obviously we're biased but Christian Pulisic can do that yeah. he gets the ball he looks to take people on you know Havertz and Ziyech have their skills and they're very very good but this game wasn't calling out for a, a quality ball in the box for somebody to finish especially after Lukaku comes off this yeah. game's calling out for somebody who can beat their first man yeah. create a defensive imbalance and then cut the ball back and that's Pooley. something is concerning right now is Ziyech 
Um, he's been coming off the bench lately. I don't know if that's injury related or what, but the guy was on fire midseason. Um, I'm not sure why you set him in this situation. Uh, it seems like that he would add uh, another spark if you had Havertz, Ziek, um, Polisic, and Werner and Mount up front. I I think that that is a combination that works for this team right now. Now. I will give merit to what you said as far as the fatigue factor goes. Absolutely, I get that. I'm not sure this is the match to do that. I, I think that I think that you know you've got West Ham, who's kind of on the ropes right now. Arsenal had to win. Yeah. West Ham, you know, I, I think we look at West Ham and we're like, okay, right now in this point of the season, do we want to? Do we want to give up points to Arsenal or do we want to give up points to West Ham? And I think if you look at the two, you, you want to bury Arsenal when you can. Yeah. I mean, you just do. And, and, and I think we missed a, a good uh, an incredible opportunity. So moving from the blue to the red, my friend, um, that match was hard yesterday. That was, that was hard to watch. It was really hard to watch. And several things came up for me, but, but I definitely want to hear your take on it. Um, number one, I, I'm, I'm going to say it. You cannot blame this on on, on Rainier. You cannot put all of this on him. You can't. Guys have to come out. They have to play. They have to be ready to 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 perform. And and granted, you know the thing that happened with Ronaldo and his partner and their their kids that was so horrible. It was terrible. Um, as a father of twins, you know, heart goes out. Uh, but the guys need. They they. It seems like they should have had the next guy up type mentality. Um, everybody looked deflated. Everyone looked defeated. Um, I just want to get your thoughts behind that match, man, because it was sad. It was it was sad for me as a football fan to watch that performance that United had. Uh, this season's over. Um, they're they're not fighting. They're not fighting for a, a top four spot anymore. They're not fighting at all. Bruno hit it on the head. They are not fighting. Liverpool fought for every ball in a match that, I mean, yeah, they're trying to win the league, but that was pride. And Liverpool showed pride in, in the badge yesterday. Yeah. And I think that's what's saddest. There's no shame in losing to a club of the quality of Liverpool or a Manchester City. And sometimes you get beat bad. You know, heavyweight fights, guys throw big punches, and you get you get beat up. So losing for nothing, even as much as that sucks, that's not the shame of it. The shame is the performance. The shame is the lack of effort. The shame is the gulf in class between the quality of players available. And and look, United have talent in certain positions, but where they are lacking the most is so obvious. Um, I don't know Harry Maguire. I don't know him as a person. He may be a very, very nice guy. I'm not going to disparage that. But he is not Manchester United quality, and he's surely not a Manchester United captain. What he does for England, fantastic. What Pogba does for France, fantastic. Yeah. But you get paid an awful lot of money by your club team. And the performances, the injuries, the excuses, it's just not good enough. I honestly... If there aren't massive, massive overhauls to players in and out in this team, then it won't matter. I, I, honestly, I'm kind of over talking about it because n nothing's going to change until the new manager comes in. Uh, good luck to Eric Ten Hag, and I think he's got the ability to do it. But again, if the board doesn't back him, if the board is not there to do the things that need to be done, it's not about who the manager is. It's honestly who the players are, uh, we've known for a while they're not up to it. So why the, why the board doesn't know that they're not up to it, why we aren't doing better than this, I, I really have no explanation. As a fan of this club for 30-some years now, to watch what's going on is it's, it's so sad. Yeah, you hit it on the head. I don't care if you're a fan of Manchester United. I, I, I'm not a fan of Liverpool. But I can tell you that when they were in the doldrums seven to ten years ago, it was bad for the sport to not have these classic rivalries, to not have these classic clubs. And I'm not saying there isn't room for new guys to, 
to step in. That's not what I'm saying at all. But Manchester United's history is intertwined with top flight English football. So to see them lagging the way they are right now, to see them just absolutely treading water, uh, I, it's more than just me as a fan of Manchester United. This is me as a fan of football saying, hopefully Eric Ten Hag has the ear of the board and something can change because that was dire. It was yeah. absolutely dire. Yeah. You know, I, I think the thing that stuck out for me the most was just the – the and, and, and honestly, I'm going to say it a little bit today too because there were points probably in the 60th and 70th minute where you saw in this match look on guys' faces. Um, I've never seen that look on um, Mason Mount's face. I've never seen, uh, you know uh, – I, I've just never seen those those looks of just like what do we do, you know, Reese James, uh, Aspilicueta, um, you know, Marcus Alonso. Like I, I've never seen just those looks like, what the heck, you know, Christensen. It was a mistake, and he gave the ball away, and that started the scoring. Absolutely, it was a terrible, terrible play. But I think that if you are a team that has your wherewithal. That you you look at that and you're like, okay, you know what? We gave that one away. Let's just score. And that's what they did. Problem is, is that you're playing catch up. And the one thing that you said that is so true, Chelsea is not built to play catch up. They are not built to go head to head with people scoring goals. They, they just can't. They need to amass a two goal or three goal lead and then sit back and turtle. That's that's what we're that's where we're at right now. And and I don't see I don't see very much more success this season if we don't do that. Um, we need to just lock down that top four. If we can lock down that top four we'll be fine. Today would have been a great day to start, you know, securing that padlock. We didn't do it. Um, I think we missed a big opportunity because I think West Ham, um, they, they're, they're coming to play. They're coming to play. I mean, they, they're still part of this. And so um, that's just my take on it. But getting back to United, man, I, I, I am not nearly as long in this sport as, as you have been, um, and I've been rather mediocre uh, because you've scored many goals on me. Um, so – yeah, I'm glad you're out of the picture because he smiled. There it is. There it is. But um, it is. It is. It's. It's incredibly disheartening to see uh, a pillar of this sport, kind of, kind of where they're at right now. And, and and I'm with you. I, I hate talking about it. I really do. I'm a, I'm a huge Chelsea fan, but I hate talking about it. I, I'd rather us be both good and walk away from a match, you know, shaking hands and saying, you know what, great match. Yeah, it's. I want to believe it's just a period that we have to go through. I mean, Liverpool fans had to live through it, and now they're they're top of the mountain. I mean, they 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 could not be happier with the quality of players they have, the level of manager they have. It's a great historic club. Manchester United is going to get back there. How long does it take? Has that process begun? Is is this the first step toward that? You know, it, it's tough. We, in Everybody wants to talk about the, the Fergie era, and it, and it was fantastic, but, folks, it's time to move on. Um, Fergie probably would struggle to coach in this era right now. He, he would have to adapt his tactics and his mindset to understand the modern player, and, and probably he would because that's why he was a great manager, but we got to quit looking backward, and we need to look forward and say this is the kind of player we need at this club, and, yes, maybe there are some people to – to model on, right? We could use a Wayne Rooney right about now. We could use a Brian Robson. But we need the modern version of those guys. And 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 it isn't Paul Pogba. By the way, apparently Paul Pogba has signed a four-year contract with PSG. Um, coincidentally, hurt his calf within five minutes yesterday and didn't play. I don't think we're going to see Paul Pogba in a Manchester United uniform any longer. And that's probably for the best because he plays better in a France uniform. Um, it's time for people to go. I would really like to see Rangnick bring the gavel down and say, you guys just aren't good enough and we're not going to finish top four, so we're building. If Harry Maguire never played for Manchester United again, I don't think people would be too upset about that. And maybe a handful of other players. Um, big change needs to happen here. 
big change needs to happen here, and we'll see if they've got the wherewithal to do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have a quick, really quick, hey, Aaron, segment for our short show tonight. Hey, Aaron, um, how do you feel about this? Kai Havertz for Lewandowski, a swap trade. What do you think about that? It, it, you know, we were kind of joking about this earlier, but, um, you know, uh, it, trades don't happen a whole lot in, in, in European football, in, in, in football in general. Uh, it's not how it's set up, but it does happen from time to time. Um, doesn't always work out best, but honestly, I think right now, as good as Kai Havertz is for Chelsea, you don't need another Kai Havertz. You've got plenty of, of playmaking midfielders. What you don't have is a world-class striker finishing. So Kai Havertz to Munich and you getting Lewandowski in return or however much money that might you know, cost either. I actually think Kai Havertz is probably long-term more expensive because of his age. Um, but if you had Lewandowski on the end of some of these you know, build-up plays that's going on rather than Timo Werner and Romelu Lukaku who just are not – they're good. Yeah. I'm not disparaging these guys. I'd, I'd take them on my indoor team tomorrow. Right. But – they're not Robert Lewandowski. And Kai Havertz can go to Munich, and he's going to win his things, and that's what he wants. He wants his trophies. Lewandowski's done it, and he wants a new challenge. Yes. Look, I don't know who the new owners of Chelsea are going to be, but step one, if you hear Robert Lewandowski's available, I think you're buying that man. And if it costs you Kai Havertz, I think it's worth the deal. I, I, I like Kai Havertz. I really do. But I, I think this is a deal worth taking if it's on the table. Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for our short show tonight. Um, now we're to the best part of the show. Um, Aaron's going to send us out with his final thoughts. Guys, listen, thank you so much. Hit us up on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, on wherever you find your podcast. It doesn't matter where. We're there. Uh, the Red and the Blue Soccer Chat. We uh, we love you guys. Glad you're there. Um, shout out to Chatham Tap Fishers, where we're at right now. Uh, Rudy, thank you so much for letting us broadcast live. Um, you know, it's been a tough day for me, and I'm going to be transparent. It's been a really tough day for me, um, and, um, yeah. So thank you guys. Uh, you know, a little footy-footy makes it uh, – makes makes the day a little bit better. So, um, Aaron, what do you got for us, man? You know, it, it, yesterday was a real rough day because we're not getting top four, and we lost to our really most historic rivalry, rivalry in, in uh, just a humiliating way. Um, and, you know, Chelsea and Arsenal have history. Um, the, the silver lining for you is you probably are still going to get your top four. And uh, you, you weren't, you weren't going to win. The, after Christmas, you weren't going to win the league anyway. So you guys are in a decent spot. Um, but I can tell you this, folks. There's a silver lining to everything. Uh, You've you got to find the good. Uh, and uh, good things are out there for all of us. And the beauty is there's another game. There's always another game. Now, sadly, our next game is against Arsenal, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But, folks, uh, it's a metaphor. There's, there's always another game. There's always another thing to fight for. Um, I, I got my ass handed to me in indoor soccer last night. But you know what? The beers were still cold after. My friends are still my friends. There's still so much to be happy about. So, folks, um, hopefully uh, you are hitting that like button. You're hitting the subscribe. We want to hear you comment. Give us some feedback. We try to put polls out as well. Uh, like Evan said, we're on so many platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Anchor. Um, if you stand outside, Chatham Tap, we'll talk to you about football. We'll have a blast, folks. This is what we do. This is why we started the show. So uh, I'm going to say this, folks. There's always another game. Be ready to play. Um, hashtag say gay. Hashtag black people vote. Thanks, folks. We love you. Take care. Happy 420.